So here is question 2a part 1. So here's our question. This is now talking about some people that are called observers. And they're looking at how people, shoppers interact in a supermarket. That helps them decide, you know, what kind of displays help people buy products, all of those kind of things. So each observer records the gender, it records their age band, and whether or not they stop to look at the product on the shelf. Okay, so that's setting the scene. Now let's look at some actual information. So the research company found that 42.1% of the shoppers stopped to look at the products. And they also found that 70.4% of them were female. Okay, so there's some data that we'll process in a minute. Now we're told one of the observers used this information to predict that 17.1% of shoppers will be male and will not stop to look at the products on the shelf. So we need to figure out how that observer made the prediction and look at any assumptions that were made. So one of the things that first occurs to me as soon as it starts talking about assumptions is this whole idea of independence. Okay, so that would be my first reaction, is that they are talking about the independence assumption. Independence assumption. God, that's terrible handwriting. Sorry, guys. Okay, not assumptions, assumption. So let's think about well, what is the independence assumption. So the general rule is that the probability A and B occurring is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, so that's one of the assumptions. There are a couple of others. We could also talk about the conditional probability and sometimes we might use those. Um, in this particular case I'm going to use this because I've just been given some straightforward probabilities. So the 42.1% is just looking at those that stopped. And 74.4% 70.4% were female. So they're just giving me those very straightforward assumptions. So that's what I'm going to look at here. So I'm just going to, on a new bit here, I'm going to write down the information that I want. So let's look at, they wanted, they talk about the 17.1% are males who will not stop. So those are the two things that I firstly need to find. So I need to find what is the probability of a shopper being male, and I need to find what is the probability of them, the, the person not stopping. Okay, so let's start with the male. Well, I told, I'm told that 70.4% of the shoppers were female. So either they're female or they're male. So if we know what the probability of male, it's going to be 1 minus the probability of females. So 1 minus 0 0.704. And that gives me, that means that 29.4% of shoppers were male. Okay, so I've got that part there now. Now I'm going to look at the next part. It said will not stop. So the information above, we were told 42.1% of the shoppers stopped to lock. So if I want the probability that they didn't stop, it's going to be 1 minus that number. So 1 minus 0 0.421 and that's giving me a probability of 0 0.579. So the probability that somebody did not stop is 57.9%. Okay, so I've found that so far. So I can say tick, right, I've got I've dealt with the male and not stopping. Now I need to use look at that 17.1% and say, right, they've predicted that 17.1% of them will be male and not stop. Let's have a look at our information. Do we agree with that? So they've talked about the probability they are male and did not stop. And they've said that their probability is 0.171. Okay, so let's take our information and see if that works out using our independence assumption rule. So the independence assumption says if probability A times probability of B is equal to the probability of A and B, then it's independent. 
So that's what we're going to try to do. So we're going to do the probability of male and not stopping. And we're going to do the 0 0.294 times 0 0.5. 0.579 and when we multiply those together they get a value of 0 0.171 okay and so now that's what they stated okay so what we've just done now is the first part show how the observer made this prediction so the observer made the prediction that these events are independent and therefore they use this probability, this independence rule, to work out the probability of being male and not stopping. Okay, so the next, last part of it, stating any assumptions, I just want to write a little bit more about that. Okay, so we're talking about um, that independence. Okay. And I want us to I want you to tell me exactly what we're assuming independence of. So if we've got information there, we've got two types of information. We've got information about whether they are male or female. And we've got information about whether they stopped or did not stop. Okay? So when we're talking about the independence, we're talking about the independence of these two variables here. We're assuming that whether somebody is male or female is independent from whether they stop or do not stop. Okay, that's what we're assuming and that's what I would want you to say. Okay, so we are assuming um, that being male and not stopping... are independent. Okay, and that is the answer to question 2A part 1.